two minutes late this morning. Oh, Jack Domenio, you will turn in your grave. Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio out of Lewis in the United Kingdom. Thirty-three in Lewis on a Thursday morning. Thursday always seems terribly important. It's uh, we've gone over the hill, heading towards the weekend. We. Good morning, here we are again. Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio in Lewis, East Sussex. Oh, isn't it wonderful to say broadcasting to the world. Uh, we also, Our television, uh, Mirador Television, also uh, sends out pictures and stories and bits and pieces to the world through Roku. And uh, I proudly say to people in this town, we have an audience, a potential audience of hundreds of millions. The fact that we've got 2,000 for television and uh, two for radio is quite beside the point. The fact is that we have good fun, and uh, those who listen to us and watch us also have good fun. Why do I know? Because they stop me in the street. I, um, I wear a distinctive trilby, brown trilby hat, uh, and a, 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 what is described as a Doctor Who scarf. Uh, so people recognize the hat, they recognize the scarf, they never, ever recognize the face. <laughs> what does that do for my ego? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, me. Well, here we are for another inane morning of uh, some sort of chatter. Uh, it's um, it's very interesting, really, uh, that uh, the world keeps on turning despite what we manage to do to it. And uh, I have to say that uh, it's every Western government seems to be in complete and utter turmoil. Why? Well, I have my own theories. Um, I think that we've just got a generation who may be natively clever, uh, but they went through that ridiculous uh, time in the uh, the 60s and the 70s when uh, we decided, much to the chagrin of traditionalists, but the modernizers, uh, whoop de doo we went through that period when uh, education was odd, to say the least. It wasn't anything to do with the three R's, if you add, it couldn't add up, it didn't matter. If you couldn't spell, it didn't matter. If you couldn't write, it didn't matter. And if, in fact, you were in the egg and spoon race, you lost, it didn't matter. You needed to hug your competitor. Well, well, well. I wonder if it's all coming home to roost and that we're going to have to look through it for, for a while. I have to say that my grandsons, um, who are well, mid-twenties, um, uh, starting to show some signs of well, no, that's that's unkind. In fact, they're both pretty capable young chaps, and uh, although um, they, hmm, what should we say, um, parted a little in their early years, uh, they've both got very responsible jobs, and away they go, and they take things seriously. They don't talk to me very often. After all, I'm the old granddad tucked away in Lewis. One is in Bristol and the other is in um, Sheffield. Not Sheffield, sorry, Newcastle. And uh, they, um, you know, what it's like when you're, you're, you're younger and uh, you've got nice girlfriends and uh, and you are doing all the nice things, just finding out what dinner parties are all about and so on and so forth. Although the lockdown has stopped that sort of nonsense, I suppose. Or has it? I, it was difficult to read the headlines this morning on, on the web because, first of all, uh, papers are showing video uh, and uh, the BBC uh, I'm not quite sure what they're showing uh, there's a lot of uh, BBC 
signs all over it. Uh, so looking at the latest news was very difficult to, uh, to determine. Um, the one thing that struck me was that um, Boris has said if if uh, the Palace of Westminster needs to be refurbished, he might move the uh, government and parliament uh, to York. Now, it's very interesting that uh, somehow we don't seem to learn, do we? Our capital city is London. Now, that's, that's where the financial centre is. That, that's where the cultural centre is. Uh, I mean, many, many businesses, and particularly Japanese businesses, do not go elsewhere because they like, if they're going to send their executives to live here, they like the culture of London. Now, the BBC tried that. They, they spent a fortune moving things to Manchester. And much as Manchester, I'm sure, is very pleased, is it's been a bit of a flop. They've got empty studios. Is Not many people are willing to, uh, to, to actually get into a car and go to uh, Manchester to sit in a live studio. Um, and so even less, I think, are people going to uh, relate to the government uh, in if it's based in York. Although I must say it, I, I said to somebody the other day that if I'm going to have my face covering, which uh, I'm perfectly prepared to do, I mean, I have got some uh, uh, tucked away in my pocket, they're pretty ordinary things, but if I'm going to have to use it for quite some time to come, that I would like one with the skull and crossbones on, or at least Dick Turpin uh, written across the front. And they looked at me and, and saw, uh, who is Dick Turpin? Well, Dick Turpin was a famous highwayman uh, who um, on one famous occasion, and here comes the the bit that relates it to York, is rode his horse, Black Bess, night and day, uh, to get to York, uh, supposedly so that he'd got an alibi for his crime. He'd actually held up a stage and uh, looted the passengers of their gold watches and their wallets uh, and, and so on. And uh, he... Uh, he decided if he was in York, he couldn't be in London, or in the South anyway, where the crime had been committed. And so he rode his horse day and night, and legend would have it uh, that he managed to get there and said, hey, I'm here, don't blame me this time, Gov. Uh, they didn't buy it, they hung them. <laughs> there were a lot of... And uh, actually, you know, one of the things is there was no sexism in those days when it came to highway people. If you were a highway man or highway woman and you were caught, you were hanged. They didn't care which sex you were. It was an outrage against society. And the moment they started to move mail via the um, uh, carriages, uh, the stagecoaches, then if you held one up, you were attacking the Royal Mail and you were attacking the state. They didn't forgive that in those days. Nowadays we can have a go at the state and they don't hang draw on quarters oh that was a vicious vicious death I often wonder what that meant and apparently uh, they, they hanged people uh, until they were sort of semi-conscious just aware of what was going on then they slit them and took out their gizzards and then they uh, 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 drew them behind a horse uh, with their bodies rattling along the roads uh, during the, the uh, a journey until they were made sure then they were dead my god can you imagine going through that and uh, somebody is probably thinking, my God, how can you talk about something like that this morning, <laughs> at this hour of the morning? Anyway, let's, let's do a little music. I went looking for... Um, uh, oh, I, I, I was looking for actually thunder. I the words thunder to find music. I didn't find anything terribly exciting. But um, I think um, the, the, there was one, I think it's... Uh, a carnival waltz, certainly it's called Jesse Carnival Waltz, uh, but one was for children, and I thought, it's just so charming, let's all be children for a few minutes, let's hope this is it. Thank you. 
Christ, that was a bit of a carnival waltz, wasn't it? That was okay. I like uh, I like this sort of strange esoteric music that we get each morning because it's not unpleasant. Uh, you won't hear it again probably uh, uh, for a long time elsewhere. And uh, so what the hell? We're ch we're ex uh, exchanging experiences. Um, I thinking about the fair and the carnival, and uh, why would I think about the carnival? And um, basically, I was playing around with words. I put in lightning, and there was some rock music. I put in thunder, and it really wasn't that great. And I thought, well, it's the morning. What should we do? Carnival. Let's have a carnival. And that's what came up. And uh, very nice it is, too. Very, very nice. Talking of carnivals, uh, we were... Uh, actually, this has nothing to do with carnivals whatsoever, but we were um, shooting video shooting film for our next documentary which i've given the title the working title floods of blood and every time i say that to somebody they go yeah but the whole point is if you put blood into a title you're bound to get somebody who watches it and that was our experience with the first one our first documentary went out um, and in the first couple of times it was broadcast it was called just the high street uh, and uh, I, I said, no, hang on, I gave it the, the title uh, The Bloody Past of a Tiny Town. The moment the word bloody was in there, wow, the viewers started to pile in. What's all this about? Whether it's a, it's a swear word or whether it was because they liked a bit of blood, I have no idea. But anyway, floods of blood is what we're calling it. And uh, I was with my uh, co-presenter, uh, Annie Verrill, uh, down at uh, the Lewis Priory. A wonderful place. Uh, it, there's not much to see, actually. It's a whole pile of rubble, if you like. Uh, but that which is left standing is a thousand years old, and I find it very fascinating. And uh, somebody said to me yesterday, I think it was actually a, a, a lady in uh, Waitrose, and she said, um, oh, you were out, out filming, where were you? And I said, uh, down at the Priory. And she said, oh, yes, it's just lovely down there. Do, where the rabbits? And I said, yes, sir, where? I said, I used to go down there at 5.30 in the morning and I would see uh, the rabbits and I would talk to the rabbits and watch them romping because they're not frightened at that hour of the morning. And I said, also, I saw a couple of monks. And she paused for a moment, then realised what I'd said. <laughs>